Playhouse. Author's Playhouse presents tonight Conrad Berkovici's heartwarming story, There's Money in Poetry, an amusing tale of business versus poetry. But here is Mr. Levine to tell you the story. Mr. A.S. Levine, outstanding dress goods merchant and poetry lover. Always that little bit of laughing. And people calling me now poetry lover. But should it be that a man like myself, just because he's in the dress goods business, all of the, he should not like poetry? Should be ashamed of poetry? No. What would you say if I tell you poetry has even happened in my family? <laughs> That's right. It all starts with my friend Kentrovitz. He came to America at the same time I did, 25 years ago. He's in the dress goods business, too. And one day, I'm visiting him in his office. I knock on the door. Come in. Hello, Kentrovitz. Hello, Levine. How's business? All right. The help? Hey, all right, too, I guess. Say, Kentrovitz, what is this? You sitting in this office without a light on, looking sad like your father who always spoke politics, the whole world on your shoulders? What's the matter? Levine... If you weren't my friend from the old country yet, I, I couldn't tell you my troubles. Such a shame it is. Uh, first, before you tell me, Kentovitz, turn on the light. Well, that's better. No. I, it's about my Nizzy. That a son like him should happen in my family, with the best of examples always before him. His father and his brother in business, and Nizzy should just loaf for years, do nothing, nothing, mind you, but writing poetry. You talked with him? Have I talked to him? Talked to him? I've talked to him. His mother has talked to him. And his brother also has talked to him. So angry as he makes his brother, it is a war going on between them. Is he thinking he's so much better because he can write poetry? Talking to Izzy, it's like talking to a wall. Hi, Levine, what will the end be by? No, 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 It's got to come out all right. With a father like you and a brother like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, but some of it is my fault. Uh, that I know now. Aha! That you know now. Uh, what do you mean? That poem of Izzy's you got still hanging over the wall on your desk. What is it called? Uh, Indian Wind. Indian Wind. How old was Izzy when they printed it in the junior high school paper? Thirteen he was. Yes. And you had to have it framed? But I was so proud. The whole neighborhood was proud of him. How should I know he would get a swelled head? Kentrovitz. Then he wouldn't have gotten a swelled head. That would have been wonderful. You mean I... My good friend, for months after you had this Indian wind poem framed, you got to show it to everybody who comes into office. To even total strangers. You can't talk business for five minutes, but you got to get up, take down the poem from the wall like this, and then, oh, what a son I have, only 13, but a celebrity already. This poem, Indian wind, my Izzy is writing, and they're printing it in the paper. Here, <laughs> give me that, that Indian wind. Not the tiger fire fleeting, not the silver grassy greeting. It, mm, for this he won't do what I tell him, huh? Writes poetry forever, huh? Fui on this poetry. Kentrovich, a good frame. And glass all over the floor. I, such a son I've got. A son that I say? No, a stranger. I'm no good. And he's getting worse every no, year. No, no, come, Kentrovich. It, it, it can't be so bad. After all, Izzy's have a good family. So it's got to come out all right. You know, blood is thicker than water. And, Kentrovich, there ain't been any poets in your family yet. In mine family, poets? No. No bankrupts and no poets. Only your son, Izzy. And every night I got to see him sitting on my living room sofa, reading his poems to my daughter, Margaret. <laughs> What is the warm night of moon stars wearing heavy musk of fruited bough? Is it recompense for dawn, ashen by the shrouding storm, or is the crying flash of whited gulls enough? Oh, 
Izzy, you, you've never written anything so so beautiful. I I hardly want to speak. Papa, pa Papa, listen to Izzy's new poem. It's just been published in Poetry Age magazine. Uh, give me the magazine, Izzy. Hmm. Listen, Papa. Boy. What is the warm night of moon stars wearing heavy musk of fruited bough? Uh, do you know what that makes me think of? A, a beautiful woman like, like Kay Francis. A beautiful woman looking back to when she was young. Here, Izzy, you read the rest. It's so much more beautiful when you read it. <clears throat> Is it recompense for dawn, ashen by the shrouding storm? Storm? I'll give you a good storm. Izzy, then are you going into business? You got no right to worry your father like I seen him worry today. And your mother. And bring shame on your family, loafing like this and writing poetry. Papa, how can you dare talk to Izzy that way? Mr. Levine? I'm very sorry, but I don't think you're in a position to judge. Izzy is a great poet. Great poet, great schmoet. For Kentrovitz, what kind of a business is that? Poet. Izzy's all over. Papa, remember Izzy is a guest in our house. A guest? No. For ten years, the neighbor boy, and now all of a sudden he's a guest. And I'm the best friend of his family. Izzy, I wouldn't have said nothing. Nothing. But every night you sit near my Margaret on the sofa and you read poetry to her. First, go make a man of yourself. Then talk to my Margaret. Make a man of myself, you say. To you, nobody's a man who isn't in the dress goods business or selling furniture or running a law office or working in a bank. What you really mean is that nobody's a man who isn't making money. Lots of money. Oh, I'm fed up. Fed up with this narrow, petty, stupid thinking. Izzy, come back here. No, I'm through. Absolutely through. Now look what you've done, Papa. You've insulted Izzy. Insulted? Talking sense is now an insult. I'm going with Izzy. Margaret, come here. No. Margaret, you sit down here. No, no, no. Remember, please, to whom you're talking. Your father. Izzy, the door, Izzy. Close the door when you're going out. Oh. <laughs> now look what you've done. I'll never see Izzy again. Never. Never. Exactly what I'm asking. <laughs> In my house, no more loafers. <laughs> You're crying. But such a heartbreak as Kentrovitz has over Izzy. His own flesh and blood. I got to see him again soon. Poor Kentrovitz. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Kentrovitz. Just a minute while I'm finishing this telephone. This big delivery, you say? Look, Mr. Stein. Uh, Kentrovitz, I'll wait outside. No, no, Levine, sit down. Uh, you'll pardon me, Mr. Stein, just a moment. Uh, someone is just coming into the office. Uh, sit down, Levine, by my desk here. All right. Now, what were you saying? Yeah, but I'm telling you, Mr. Stein, this big delivery is impossible. Ah, but you're wanting 200 bolts? Well, I'm sorry. I... Well, look, I've got no time to spare now. Call me up some time later. Kentrovitz, a big order. And you're just hanging up on it like that. A big order? So what's a big order when I've got news? I search news, Levine. Haven't you heard? Hitler dead? No, no. Better than that, even. Better than Hitler dead? What? Levine, it's about Izzy. Mine Izzy has come to a census. Blood is thicker than water, like you said. You mean... Yeah, yeah, a job he has got. No, Kentrovitz. Yeah, on the road with the ABG Dress Goods Company. You mean it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kentrovitz. Hi, my old friend, Kentrovitz. You are right. The biggest dress goods owner in the whole world couldn't make me so happy. Hey, you're easy. It's now an A number one song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Kentrovitz, it's a celebration. Yeah, 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 celebration. Hey, Levine, we haven't done so bad in this country, have we? We made a little money. The war will be over soon, please God. And now our children are all right. So come, Levine, a celebration now. With wine, Kentrovitz. A big bottle of wine. <laughs> Dick, it's simple, hop 
Oven symbol did get symbol. Oven symbol did get symbol. Oven say. <laughs> Hi, oh, Levine, Levine. Uh, this drink will be to a... To a... Yeah, drink too easy, to his new job, yeah. to the ABG Dress Goods Company, to me, to you, to your business, to my business. I can't do it. What's left? Levine, <laughs> there's your child, your Margaret. Uh, thank you, Kendrick. This last drink mm, is to... The, the, the bottle, uh, it's empty already. Well, to Margaret. To Margaret. Levine, we should go to your house now and tell the news to Margaret. A good idea. I will she be happy. Yeah. Because now... Yeah? Well, when you're easy, you should sit in my house and talk to my Margaret. Even maybe now and then read poetry. I should be happy. Not angry like I was last month, telling him never to come into my house again or see my Margaret again. Uh, you told him that? Uh, forgive me, Kentrovitz, but I was so worried for you. Izzy should be a man, not a poet. Now he's a man! Of course, Levine. <laughs> and you did it. What I couldn't do, what his mother even couldn't do, and his brother even couldn't. A drink, Levine. One more drink to no, you. No, 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 not now, Kentrovitz. At my house. I got mine at home. Yeah. We'll go now and we'll tell the good news to Margaret. Come on, Kentrovitz. Let's sing again, all together. <laughs> As they'll <laughs> Margaret! Margaret! Yes, Papa? Come here, Margaret! Well, what is it, Papa? Oh, hello, Mr. Cantrovitz. Hello, Margaret. News, Margaret. We got news. Yeah, he's such news. Well, what is it? Tell me. Well, tell her, Cantrovitz. No, you. Whose son is he, Cantrovitz? Whose son? <laughs> is it something about Izzy? Yes, wonderful. Well, well, what about Izzy? He's got a job. With the APG Dress Goods Company. Selling on the road. No. No. You didn't do that to Izzy. Izzy, a, a real poet. And you're choking him. Choking him in, in dress goods. I, I didn't think it would be bad news. Maybe she's happy. No, not kind, is they? How does one understand women? Did anybody ever? Oh, Izzy, he let you do it. He was weak and let you... I never want to see him again. Never, never. Papa. Uh, Papa, please answer the door. I'm getting dressed. I'm answering. Don't worry. <sighs> Who could be in such a hurry? Izzy. Izzy Kentrovitz, after such a long time. Oh, for three months. Uh, come in, Izzy, come in. Uh, is Margaret home? You just caught her. Oh. Margaret, it's Izzy. She's getting dressed. The door must be closed. Come on, come on, sit down. Ah, uh, uh, Izzy, you're looking so different. Uh, the, the haircut and the new suit. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, but mostly it's you. You're, uh, you're older. Older? <laughs> three months in business and I'm an old man. <laughs> Not an old man, Izzy. But a grown-up man. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, what's keeping Margaret? Margaret! Didn't you hear me, Margaret? Izzy is here. I heard you, Papa. Be down in a few seconds. She'll be right down. Hey, Izzy, tell me. Tell me, uh, you noticed it? Margaret ain't herself lately. Uh, I certainly have. Well, I'm glad you asked because... Well, you see, Mr. Levine, all the time I was on the road, I wrote to Margaret every single day. Sometimes twice yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's only answered me once. At first I thought, well, that maybe she was angry with me because... Well, you know, because you had been so angry with me that night. No, 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 Izzy. It's a matter of fact. Uh, 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 yes, I know, Mr. Levine. Uh, Mama wrote me something in a letter that made me know that you weren't angry with me anymore. <laughs> of course not. Shh, Here comes Margaret now. Margaret, look, such a fine visitor. Hello, Izzy. Gosh, it's great to see you again, Margaret. Mm, Margaret, such a beautiful dress to welcome Izzy. Yes, Margaret, it's very lovely. Thank you. And Margaret, is not Izzy looking wonderful? He certainly changed. Oh, uh, not really so much, Margaret. <laughs> no, no, Izzy, a great deal. Hey, we're all proud of you. 
Which reminds me, I'm speaking with your boss the other day. Goldstein? Goldstein. And he's thinking now a great deal of you for what you're doing in the business. Then I tell your father that. Oh, he is very happy. But I say to him, why shouldn't he do all right in the dress goods business? After all, dress goods is in the Kentrovitz family over 300 years. <laughs> Enough of business. I got to go now to a large meeting. Papa, there's no large meeting tonight. Oh, yes, Margaret. A very special meeting. Good night. Uh, good night, Mr. Levine. Good night. Sit down for a few minutes, Izzy. Uh, soon you have to be going. I've got a date. A date? Margaret, didn't you get my letter saying I'd be here tonight? Yes. Well, then why are you going out with somebody else? Well, Izzy, I already made this date two weeks ago. Margaret, why are you so distant to me? So cool? That one letter you wrote to me, it was like a, a letter from a stranger. Was it? Well, Izzy, writing to you seemed like writing to a stranger. You changed so quickly... You didn't talk to me about it at all, what you were going to do. I I'm all confused about you. When I think about all the things you used to believe in, and the things you used to hate, how you didn't want to be, you know, narrow and limited in your... Well, you know all those things you used to say and write about. And then I see you now. Think about you the way you are now. Why, you're just like all the other boys I know. Oh, Margaret, I I'm not any different uh, inside of me. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't talk about what I was going to do, but... I had to do it that way. I, I wasn't sure at first. Uh, the only thing I knew was that, well, if I, I wanted to marry you, and, and Margaret, I, I do want to marry you. Now, please, Izzy, I, I can't think about that now. Oh, my date. Listen, Margaret, I, I just knew that, well, that we'd have to listen to what your dad and my, and my folks were saying about me. And, oh, the bell. Uh, Margaret, listen to me. We'll soon be able to get married. No, Izzy, no. I don't want to marry a traveling salesman. But, Margaret... I've got to answer that. You've got to listen to me first. I, I, I'm not going back to the road. What do you mean? Oh, darn that, Bell. Uh, I'm staying in New York. Pa's taking me into partnership with him, and, and as soon as I'm making enough money, I'm going to ask you to... Is it? The telephone beside you, it's ringing like it was a fire. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Cantowitz and Sons. Oh, hello, Mr. Mandelbaum. Uh, yes, Mr. Mandelbaum. It's all on the order. You, you don't have to worry about it at all. Well, well, I'll send you a copy tomorrow and you can see for yourself. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Again, that Mandelbaum calling? Mm-hmm. Well, what was the matter this time? Is he? You're not listening to me. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm listening to you, Pa. You are not? You're just staring at that dress good sample in your hand like it was something the matter with it. There's nothing the matter with it. Then for why are you looking at it so? It's it's the new fabric, Pa. That I know. But we're not the only wholesaler who's gotten a sample. Naturally, every wholesaler. Right. That means we've got to do something special with it to get extra orders. Naturally again. But what? Well, that's what I'm trying to think. Uh, seal the material, Pa. Fine goods. Touch it softly, the way I do. Nice, soft. Now let that softness touch your cheek. Like this. Like it. Uh, is it such foolishness? No, Pa, no. Against my cheek, it's soft, caressing, exotic. Pa, I've got it. I've got it. Uh, got what? What you got? The name. This new fabric. We'll call it the same as my poem on the wall. Indian Wind. Indian Wind? Oh, it's a perfect name. Perfect. See for yourself. No. No name. But it has a name already. The manufacturer calls it Delta. Look, right here on the manufacturer's invoice, it says Delta. Delta for this fabric. Now, what does Delta mean to the average woman? Nothing. But the name Indian Wind. That means romance, glamour, like, like Marlena Dietrich. Look, Pa, my idea is to have the manufacturer print Indian Wind around the salvage edge of every bit of this material we buy. Come on, Pa, let's try it. For why? Because it'll make our material of this kind stand out from the rest. It's an idea that will surely appeal to women. Listen, Indian Wind. Indian Wind? That Indian Wind? No, no. Oh, come on, Pa. What can we lose on a few bowls? No, Izzy. Pa. Izzy? Oh, Pa. All right, Izzy. All right, we'll try it. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll phone the order in right away. Oh, boy, what sales are we going to make with Indian wind? Indian wind. Maybe Margaret will listen to me again someday. Kentrovich! Kentrovich! Hey, Kentrovich! Hi, 
Hey, Levine. Come, hurry now. Let's cross the street. Hey, get him. Get out. Look. Hey, such a fool. Uh, look at yourself in the mirror when you're saying that. If I'm not pulling you up on the sidewalk, you'd be dead already. I know. I know. Thank you. Well, where are you rushing to? A bank? No. Back to the office. <laughs> Almost as good as a bank. And you're having the business with Indian Wind I'm hearing about. Indian Wind? I what a son I've got. Only one year in the business, and already an idea he has that's a big success. I this Indian Wind, women are buying it like crazy. The women are crazy. Listen, Kentovich, you know I'm handling the same goods as your Indian Wind. Exactly the same. Yes? Am I selling mine? No. I'm telling you, Kentovich... I seen women in stores refusing to buy my goods simply because it does not have that Indian wind printed around the selvage edge. A smart boy, a money maker, my Nizzy. Come, Levine. The light is now changing. Yeah, 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 but what's the hurry? It's Izzy. For some reason, he won't be in the office this afternoon. I don't know. Uh, he does something. Uh, so I've got to hurry back. Goodbye, Levine. Call me up sometime. <laughs> Take your rubbers off here, Izzy. Margaret, yes. you're late coming home. Uh, it was my fault, Mr. Levine. Oh, Izzy, it's you. <laughs> Come on in. Go on, Izzy. You go first. I was talking with your father on the street today, Izzy. Oh, uh, yes? Uh, Izzy, you shouldn't be leaving him with that office alone, now that you're doing such a business. Uh, I know, Mr. Levine, but I c- couldn't help it today, though. Izzy had to meet me. Oh, so? Say, what's with you two weapons? What do you mean? You stand there, so uh, still not taking off your coats? Well, uh, well, Mr. Levine, you, you see it this way. Uh, uh, Papa, we want to... Yeah? Uh, Mr. Hmm? Levine... Papa, it's just that uh, Izzy and I got married. Uh, you see, Mr. Levine... Izzy and I were going to tell you. It was just that we didn't want uh, we didn't want you to know, you know, a big wedding, lots of ceremony. And... Oh, Papa. Papa, you're not angry. Papa, look at me. Papa, please... Mr. Levine, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Levine. Mr. Levine? No. Call me Papa, Izzy. Now, also your Papa. Levine! You? Yes, Kentrovich, yes. Unlock the door. Unlock it, Levine. It's open. Open it. Ah, you're getting me so nervous, I, I can't even open an office door. Such a phone call you made me. What's happening? Hey, Levine. Levine, it's my Nizzy again. What? He ain't come to the office in three days. Three days? For why? I don't know. I don't know. When he was just married and on his honeymoon, that was all right. But now, hey, Levine, I'm afraid... I telephone him and telephone him. What does he answer? He's very busy at home, he says. I should leave him alone. He has no time to come to the office. No time? No time for business? How's this possible? I, Levine, I'm not daring to think of it. But suppose, suppose now, what, that maybe a sickness has again come upon him? Oh, no, no, can't do it. Not, not poetry. I, I, to all the worries a man has got in business, there should yet come a thing in America, Poetry. I, Levine, once you did something with Izzy, talking to him, and he's partly your son now. Do something again. Do something again. Anything. I don't know what, but maybe you know. Kentovitz, you're sure it is poetry? No, I'm not sure. But why else wouldn't he say something when I'm telephoning him? I will telephone him. No. No. No telephoning. I'll go to Izzy myself Personally. Safe is the heart that knows the lonely night and knows the bitter seas we sail alone. Safe is the heart with only... I'll go. Let me. No, Izzy, you got to finish working. We've been getting off the track a bit. Well, who asked me to read that poem? I know, darling, I did. Why, Papa... What a surprise. A surprise. Come on in. Izzy, it's Papa. Uh, hello, Papa. Uh, didn't expect you to visit us tonight. You should have come to dinner. Uh, take his goat, Margaret. Make him stay. Then come in and help me finish. Uh, how about this? Where lies the steel Potomac's radiant stream? No, no, darling. That's not good. Uh, Papa, we'll only be a few more minutes. Just sit down here and make yourself at home. We're awfully glad you came. Izzy, that other line is so much better. Heart leads of lilac all over New England. Oh, for heaven's sake, Margaret. We've already discarded that. 
Bountiful colored my morning rose, and it fell upon a little western flower before milk white, and if love were what the rose is, and I would like to leave. Then I don't know what you thought you're trying to express. You like Vermont or Maiden of the Hills, but you don't like Hartleys of Lilac all over New England. No, because it doesn't give you anything. It, it should be more like... Then I saw her standing there. Her face shone in the light of the pale moon. Her eyes were deep, like pools that glistened in the jeweled night, and... Jeweled night? That's it, Margaret! That's it! Jeweled night. Jeweled night. Oh, that's wonderful, Izzy. That's magnificent. Jeweled night. Children, what's the matter with you? Izzy, jeweled night. Again. You forget you're a married man, Izzy. Izzy, again, poetry. Ah, oh, Izzy, what's going to become of you? Oh, Papa, <laughs> I didn't realize. Tell him, Izzy, tell him. <laughs> you're right, Papa. I am back to poetry, but... It's also part of the dress goods business. Huh? Remember the name Indian Wind and what a success that was? Who could forget? Well, Margaret and I have been going through poetry books to find a name that's just as good. That'll be just as big a success for the new fabric we bought. And we've got it. We're calling our new fabric Jeweled Night. Hmm. <laughs> you see, if it ain't number one son like that, I should be ashamed and not like poetry. I don't know. Poetry pays in business. But you got to be an American boy and know how to use it. You have heard Conrad Berkovici's story, There's Money in Poetry, adapted for Author's Playhouse by Gene Cuny and directed by Mr. Edwin Bailey. The cast of Authors Playhouse tonight included Miss Sharon Granger as Margaret, Mr. Charles Irving as Levine, Mr. Henry Sachs as Kantrovitz, and Mr. Murray Forbes as Izzy. The music was arranged and played by Mr. Elwin Owen. Next week, Authors Playhouse will bring you Ray Nafziger's unforgettable story of a pioneer mother and son in the days when the West was young. Blood will tell. Author's Playhouse was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the National Broadcasting Company.